There's a land of boundless beauty Where the untamed rivers run There are silent sunlit valleys Undiscovered, unexplored It's a home for free of spirit It's a land called one of Labrador's biggest secrets. Uh, we have a treasure in our backyard and nobody seems to really appreciate it because they haven't seen it. It's not being advertised. In fact, the magnificence of the river is being crushed by the Newfoundland government. They know there will be an outcry against damming it and destroying it forever. For anybody who likes uh, an almost pristine wilderness is about as close as you're going to get in this day and age. But the original name that has been recorded, I guess, is Mishishibu. It means roughly Grand River. Each culture looked at this and, and they were all amazed by the river and they used the same name. The Newfoundland name is Churchill River and that's what you're going to find on the maps. It was a slap in the face of Labradorians. giveaway was the building of a dam at Gull Island Lake which would flood the entire river valley right back to Churchill Falls. The shoreline will be 300 feet up in the hills as they exist now. The lower end of the river from the dam up would, would be basically a stagnant reservoir. The Labradorians might get a few jobs, uh, grease monkeys, uh, laborers, but most of the contractors bring their own people from wherever and the river is gone forever. It'll create a boom and bust situation. Create a few jobs for about five or six years while they're building the project. And I doubt seriously that very many of the people in Goose Bay, Labrador will, will get those jobs. My grandfather was a canoe maker and a lot of the stuff was lost when the river up. North was the dam up uh, Churchill Falls. He lost a lot of stuff. He never ever went on the river again. I guess it's, you have said that it brought back uh, memories of their things being destroyed. My father and his father and his father we're all Grand River Trappers. The river is extremely important to us as part of our identity. The river forms part of our culture, part of our heritage. The river was really, in a sense, our livelihood. The picture behind me is where my father and his ancestors would trap and this is the land that they lived in. The only means of earning cash was by trapping. That's what everybody in this region did in those days. My father in particular traveled right to the heights of land, which is the, um, the source of the Grand River. In some cases, two and three generations of trappers travel up the river in canoes, and, and they spent the hardest, coldest months of the, of the year, usually alone and usually very young. Rivers were like roads. I trapped from uh, about 1936 till 1948. You lived off the land, no big job getting food. If we didn't get any fur, you didn't get anything. That was, that was our goal. Brutal work, it, it's just, it's, it's slavery to get up through those rapids. In some cases, you can't even do it with your kennel full loaded. And the only place we had to sell fur to was at the, the Hudson Bay Company. And they always kept their prices to keep us just barely surviving. They would never let us get ahead. They did it purposely to keep the trappers under their thumb. There was no other way to make a dollar. 
Fort Winter Kapow is on Wolf Island and uh, it's uh, immediately adjacent to the Elizabeth River, which is uh, an Inu travel route to uh, Quebec. I think the Inu would probably use that maybe even long before the uh, trading post was established there. The Grand River, mostly I think of it as a travel route, as, a, as kind of the interstate of its day. Inu people have been using the river for millennia. We have sites that are two or three thousand years old. It's always been significant for Inu families. A lot of people want to see the Lower Churchill developed into a hydro resource. I personally would rather see the river preserved. It's far more valuable as it is than flooded with a dam. We look at the cost, how much land is put under, how much territory is destroyed, how much history, how much identity is lost. The mercury in the water, the huge trees, the vegetation and everything else like this uh, would be lost. How many animals, birds, fish are destroyed? Since I was so, so high, you know, all I heard of was my father going up the river and it's always this big mysterious place. We're really the last frontier, and we want to hold on to it. There's no doubt there's lots of footprints uh, buried along the banks of the river. Uncovering them is part of the mystery. The river valley, the canyons, it's too magnificent. It's too great. If the dams were built, this would be uh, no more river. It would just be long lakes. This is the veins that pump the water and pump the blood up and down them for the people that were here forever and uh, it's the ecosystems that run along it that will keep this country a great country forever to come. We have to preserve these areas for Canada. This river as it exists needs nothing but a little bit of comfort to make it one of the prime rivers in the country for canoeing, kayaking. If it were ever promoted as a tourism destination for wilderness tours and ecological tours, it, it, uh, I think it would break very highly. All we need is a few designated campsites, uh, clear away a little brush, uh, establish better trails, passport edges around the rapids. Nothing more really. It would do far more than a dam would for, for the Labrador economy. What's amazing is to spend 10 solid days on a river and never see any other paddlers outside of our group and see pristine wilderness all along the way. It's amazing. There's this whole range of scenic landscapes to go through and an incredible piece of Canadian history, a boreal forest. It's a very multi-layered experience. I have a very distinct memory of my father bringing his canoe from the heights of land down to Gull Island. In the spring, he took my brother and I back to Gull Island to collect his canoe. I remember looking out of the tent and seeing the moon, and uh, if you can visualize uh, the silhouettes of the trees against that bright moonlit sky and the hoot of an owl in the distance, it's, it's just something that dreams are made of.